Yes, sir, you can start. Sir. Uh, very good morning, everybody. It's such a great pleasure for me uh, to uh, co-chair this session with two very eminent uh, cardiologists, Dr. Balbir Singh and uh, a physician, my close friend, Dr. Murugnathan. And uh, we are fortunate to have Dr. P.C. Manoria, uh, who is going to speak uh, on diabetes and coronary artery disease. He's an ex-PGI. He's a very senior cardiologist and everybody knows him. Multiple books he has authored. And uh, people really long to listen to him because he dissects the uh, literature in such a beautiful manner. So I don't want to be between you and Dr. Manoria. Over to Dr. Manoria for his talk, sir. Stop sharing, Stop sharing slides from your side. Uh, they have to allow you, I think. Uh, Ankit, you have to allow him to. So good morning, everybody. For the next uh, 12 minutes or so, I'll be talking on this interesting topic, prevention of cardiovascular disease in diabetes, taming the dragon. All of us know diabetes is a den of cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is two times more common in diabetes and 52 to 80% die because of a cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction leading the cause of death. The mere presence of diabetes cuts short the lifespan by six years. And if an AMI or a stroke gets superimposed, that lifespan is cut short by 12 years. During the last couple of years, there has been a panoply of newer strategies to minimize cardiovascular disease in diabetes. Amongst the new anti-diabetic medications, we have SGLT2 inhibitors, which are powered to improve cardiorenal outcomes. We have GLP-1 receptor agonists, which improve ACVD outcomes. And if these agents are used in larger number of patients across the population, then in times to come, we will be able to cut short this minus six and minus 12 to a much lower levels. And we are proud of this time with new anti-diabetic medications. Lipid management, the dicta lower is better, is now lowest and safest for the very, very high risk patients. And we also have a reduced trial with icosprendetile, which I'll be talking about. And Endoscopic bariatric surgery, there's an increase in its utilization, although it is less effective, but it is minimally invasive. When we look at SGLT2 inhibitors, this is a panacea for heart failure and also improved renal outcomes. It decreases hospitalization for heart failure in patients at risk, as shown by these three landmark trials, the amperage outcome, the canvas, and the declared to be 58. It has improved outcome of have rep we have the landmark DAPA HF and Emperor reduce, and Solace WH passed on a new message. This is a SGLT1 T2 inhibitor, which was initiated in ADHF prior to discharge or after two days after discharge, and it showed improved outcome. Dictate HF and Empire HF are working in the same direction, and we are keenly awaiting the results of SGLT2 inhibitors and have rep deliver, and the Emperor trials are ongoing. And it is speculated that these trials are likely to come positive. All SGLT2 inhibitors decrease hospitalization for HF. As you can see, the benefit starts early. And whether you have ACVD or multiple risk factors, the benefit is always there. And this is a class effect. This is the DAPA HF trial 4,744 patients, HEF rep, diabetic, and non diabetic. The trial was prematurely terminated because of immense benefit, and you can see. The primary endpoint, cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure, and urgent HF decreased by 26%, uh, NNT only to one. Cardiovascular death decreased by 18%, worsening heart failure 30%, and all cause mortality 17%. Now, there were three big messages from DAPA H. Message one, it improved outcome of HEF prep. Diabetics or non diabetics both benefited equally without any risk of hypoglycemia. And the second message was that it has shown incremental benefit on top of RNA. And the third message, which is it 
will postpone device therapy like already been cardiac transplantation in times to come with increasing use. Emperor Reduce shows similar results in terms of decreasing hospitalization for heart failure, but failed to show a statistically significant reduction in cardiovascular death all cause mortality, which was shown by the DAPA HF trial. Both trials improved the quality of life. Now, it is very important to remember that whenever we are treating heart failure or kidney failure, they should never be treated in isolation. The cardiorenal continuum should be targeted as a whole because there's a close bidirectional link between heart failure and CKD. And don't forget, targeting CKD triggers benefit for heart failure. And this has been the missing link for several years, which we have now recognized. You can see SGLT2 inhibitors has shown renal benefits in the CB outcome trial, the declared TME58 and the DAPA and other trials. And also in the renal dedicated trial, you can see Stratton's trial, which was in diabetic CKD and DAPA CKD diabetic as well as non-diabetic uh, CKD. And they slow down the trajectory of CKD and postpones dialysis by 10 to 15 years, as you can see in data from the Cadence trial. This is the DAPA CKD, which was carried out the patients of CKD, diabetic and non-diabetic, EGFR 25 to 75, and UACR 200 to 5,000. And again, the trial was prematurely terminated. You can see a 39% reduction in the primary endpoint shown on the slide. Now, all of us know SGLT2 inhibitors is a panacea for heart failure. And GLP-1 we have now, which improves the ACVD outcomes. And these are the four positive trials, the leader, the sustain, six, the harmony, and remind. And all have shown reduction in MACE, which was statistically significant. In addition, the leader trial showed a 22% reduction in cardiovascular death and 15% reduction in all cause mortality and sustains a 39% reduction in stroke. How many additional 25% reduction in AMI and rewind has a large group of primary prevention group. Liraglutide is more often used because of these benefits. And now in times to come, the oral semaglutide is likely to be available in future and we will be utilizing more often. Oral semaglutide was approved by USFD after the Pioneer trial in 2019. And when this becomes available, it will improve acceptance and adherence to GLP-1 receptor agonist. All of us know as GLT-2 inhibitors uh, uh, improves cardiorenal outcomes, uh, GLP-1 improves ACVD outcomes, and we always desire to combine this therapy for a comprehensive cardiorenal approach, but GLP-1 is an injectable therapy. But when semaglutide becomes available, we will be more often using this combination for a cardio comprehensive cardiorenal risk reduction. Lipid management. Uh, this is an overview of the signs of last 30 years with LDL lowering. All of us know uh, forest toss that high LDL is bad. HPS toss that average LDL is not good. TNT lower is better, improved even further lowering is better. And the 4 and OTC taught us lowest is best, lowest is best. And this has been uh, reflected in the guideline ESC 2019. You can see for the very high risk group, it is 55 LDL target. And those who have a recurrence of an atherosclerotic event uh, with maximally tolerated statins have been slashed down to 40. And this is an overview of all the LDL target lowering strategies. Uh, the Lipid Association of India uh, put in a new uh, extremely high risk group, category A. The target is less than 50 and optional 30, and for category B, uh, less than 30. And what are the criteria? Category E of the extreme high risk group, CAD with greater than one features. And for the category B, CAD with greater than features of the very high risk group or recurrent ACS uh, within one year despite LDL less than 30 or a polyvascular disease. Uh, LDL lowering even up to 10, four year trial showed that it is safe. And statins are the cornerstone of therapy and they are always initiated at first line of therapy and we are familiar with their uses. If the goals are not achieved, you can use rizetamide as been shown by the improved trial. And further, we have another oral agent, pamphotoic acid, which you can utilize. And uh, this is approved by FDA, but not available in India. And you can see this is the clear harmony trial. Pamphotoic acid decreased by roughly 19% LDL. And uh, the clear wisdom trial showed that decreased by 15%. And when you use both isotamide and uh, pamphotoic acid on top of statin, you can decrease at, uh, LDL cholesterol by 36%. LDL lowering with PCSK9 is of a greater magnitude, uh, roughly one and a half millimoles. You can see in all these trials. And these are the CV outcome trials, the Foria, the Spire, the OTC, and Avapex, all have substantial number of diabetic patients, as you can see. 
and the evopex was carried out in day one to three post tcs is not an outcome trial but was uh, found uh, good results and the odyssey outcome one to 12 month post tcs and the four year was in stable acs this is the four year trial you can see a 15 percent reduction in the primary endpoint mi was decreased by 27 percent stroke 21 percent and coronary vascularization 20 no change in the cbd all cause mortality Odyssey outcome post ACS patient, you can see primary endpoint ischemic endpoint decreased by 15%, but no decrease in the CHD death. But when the data was analyzed, the LDL is greater than 100, you have uh, benefits which are more, and all cause mortality was also decreased. This PI2 was prematurely terminated uh, because of anti drug antibody and neutralizing antibodies, but still showed a benefit of 21% in the ischemic endpoint at the end of one year. This is the OPEX trial. You can see LDL reduced by 77%. And this is the subgroup analysis of the four-year trial. You can see uh, the benefit is of greater magnitude in the primary endpoint, as you can see on the left, or in the secondary endpoint, diabetogenicity was not demonstrated during the trial period. And this is the current status of plaque preservation with current lipid. Can we stabilize the plaque? The answer is yes. There's multiple data from the statin trial. Can we reduce the black buildup, which means we arrest the progression of atherosclerosis? The answer is yes. Reversal trial has beautifully shown this. And can we shrink the plague, which means regress the plaque? Yes, plague out trial has value. But the biggest question is, can we make the plaque disappear at the moment? The answer is no, but in times to come, you may have this option also. All of us know how does PCSK9 and inhibitors act. The normal function of PCSK9 is they adhere to the LDL receptor. The LDL also adhere to the LDL receptor. This is taken inside the cell. The LDL is cleared and the LDL receptors undergo lysosomal degradation. But if you block the PCSK9 by monoclonal antibodies, the LDL receptors are free to carry out its function of taking LDL inside the cell and clearing it. And the receptor gets re can, uh, recircle, uh, recycled. PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies, no, no very good drugs, but there is a problem of adherence, as you can see. So we have another option, Inclisran, which is uh, tried in the Orient programs, and the Orient 9, 10, 11 has been uh, completed. And this is the pool data you can see. This is given 300 milligram day one, then at the end of one month, and then every six months. And these are the three Orient trials. And you can see 55% reduction in the LDL with two injections per year. And if you use drug, you can see even LDL target less than 50, 58% will achieve and 16% will achieve less than the drug is safe. There are no safety concerns at the moment. Reduced trial was also a very excellent trial. You can see uh, this was carried out in patients with established CBD or diabetes resistance factors, LDL 41 to 100, triangle side 135 to 499. And you can see 26% uh, reduction in the primary endpoint. And what was very interesting that the subgroup of triglyceride less than 150 also showed a benefit. And the secondary endpoint, the benefit was more in the triglyceride group less than 150. Beautiful trial, all hazard ratio to the left. And we have now the bariatric management. Endoscopic bariatric procedures are on the increase. They are less invasive, although the benefit is less compared to the bariatric surgery. And in BP, all of us know the target is 130 by 80, and it should never be lowered down to less than 120 in 70. Lifestyle modification decrease your risk factor, but do not improve the outcome as shown by the look at trials. Aspirin, bye-bye to primary prevention, except in the group, which has a very high risk, uh, more than 10 years risk, 20%. And if you want to minimize cardiovascular disease and diabetes, you have to adopt a multi-pronged approach over a long period of time. And the long-term follow-up, 21 years, stand of shows that you can create a survival benefit of 7.9 years at the end of 21 years and CBD-free survival 8.1 years. So in summary, if you want to tame the dragon for preventing cardiovascular disease and diabetes, this requires a multi-pronged approach with long-term control of all risk factors in incorporating the new breakthrough in management, that is the SGLT2 inhibitors, the GLP-1 receptor agonists, the newer strategies for LDL, the icospendethyl, and the bariatric treatment, which now also includes endoscopic bariatric procedure. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Manoria, for this masterly presentation. And uh, you are a very positive man, and you have given us such positive information in such a short time. Uh, thank you very much. We can pause on.